Hey guys, and welcome to another Element video tutorial. Uh, this time around, we're just going to go over the basics of Element and a very broad overview of the application as a whole. So I'll try to make it as fast as possible, but also as informative as possible. Uh, let's jump into it. So uh, I guess I'll start with the panels uh, over here on the left. Uh, the first one is uh, it's just kind of a, a basic breakdown of your session. And the session is, you know, uh, it has a collection of graphs, which a graph is this over here. And it's just which what plugins are loaded and connected to one another. So in the session panel, you can, you know, you can see a tree view of everything that's in your session. Um, you can add a graph, so Element does support multiple graphs. As you can see, when I click these, it actually switches to different ones. Uh, let's see, I'll just add, add the e-verb for fun on graph 2. and So that's what's up. And when you click these, it'll actually switch, and uh, that's you know what's rendering because whatever graph is uh, selected over here. The next panel is the node panel. Actually, let's go back to this graph here. And what this does is it's it'll show you the contents of whichever node you have selected. It's on sticky mode, but there we go. So when you start clicking around, it you know, it will show you for whatever node is selected. And then if you put on sticky mode, it doesn't matter which node you click, it'll stay stuck on whichever one you tell it to be on. So let's put it on RoboVerb. And that's pretty much it. So what shows here depends on what's in your graph. Uh, uh, one thing to note about this, which is kind of cool, is if you, ha you have your MIDI in, you know, I'm going to turn off sticky. It'll, you know, it's kind of a quick way to choose your, your devices. So like this, or if you click one of the, the audio nodes, audio in or out nodes, you can actually just, you know, change your output right then and there, enable disable channels, uh, change the sample rate, all the stuff that you can do in preferences pretty much. So uh, that's the gist of that. And then the next panel is the MIDI uh, properties and filters. So there's uh, actually another video on this panel specifically if you want to look for it on the, uh, the Cushview YouTube channel. And it just uh, it breaks down. There's, each node can have its own MIDI filtering uh, depending on the node. Some nodes don't actually support filtering, but most do. And uh, you can go ahead and watch that video if, if you want to learn more about the MIDI panel specifically. Uh, the next panel here is the plugins panel. And this is just a simple list of all the plugins that you have uh, currently scanned into uh, the system. And you can just, you know, bring them over. You can search. I like to search for RoboVerb all the time. It's just easy. Uh, that, that's really all there is to that one. And then the user data path, this kind of just shows uh, things that you've saved, like presets and exported graphs. Uh, things like that. Like if we do sampler A, we want to create a preset. We'll call it my preset sampler. And we'll see that that pops in here. Then you can load those back in like that. So that's kind of what that is. It's just a quick way to, to see all your user data. Uh, that's it for the panels. Uh, let's see, what's next here? The virtual keyboard. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, virtual keyboard MIDI will go into the MIDI input node here. So wherever you connect this uh, MIDI from this will go to that. Uh, pretty simple. And down here, this is uh, what we call the graph mixer. And basically it's a channel strip looking uh, UI for each node on the graph. So here's my preset sampler. You can see the levels popping up there. You can see what's coming into RoboVerb and then also what's going on in the output. So that's uh, it's pretty handy. It's it's a nice little 
way to check levels. Uh, and there will actually be another video specifically about the graph mixer, so I don't want to get too much into it right now, but just so you know the basics of it, uh, you can reorder and yeah, it's, it's just a channel strip for each node on the graph. And then uh, I guess that leads us right into this, which I call the channel strip, which is a single channel strip that displays for whichever node is uh, currently selected. So, and the point of that is, is if you, like if you don't have much screen space and you don't want the mixer showing there, that you can still have that channel strip for whatever node you're working with, you know? So you might, you know, have this on sticky and working on RoboVerb or whatever, and you know, you, you want to mess with the levels, but you don't want the full mixer showing. That's kind of the point of that. Um, oh yeah, and there's, this is enable and disable, it's just a bypass. So, uh, moving on, on the graph editor here, that's kind of what that's called, is the graph editor. We've got the cog button, which just shows the settings for the graph, the name, rendering mode, and there'll be videos in the future uh, kind of breaking all this stuff down. But that's uh, the general thing there, just switches back and forth. Uh, let's see, what's next? The map button is, uh, you use this to map parameters on a plugin to hardware controllers, which there's a video out there for that already. Um, the view button here, that just toggles between the graph editor and the patch bay. So it's, it's actually the same routes, it's just a different way of looking at them. Like if we go over here and unconnect or disconnect everything and then go back, you see there's nothing. But if we take uh, RoboVerb output, up, let's see, RoboVerb output into display port, you know, and then we'll go back over here, you can see, you know, it created those routes. If we go back, we can take those out, see, and now they're gone. So it's just a different way of looking at the patches on your graph. <clears throat> uh, what else we got here? The uh, tempo, your meter. Uh, this button right here will, if you have MIDI clock enabled, it will... When it's on, that means actually sync to the, the MIDI clock, but if you turn it off, that means don't use the MIDI clock. So it's kind of just a convenience button, so you don't have to go into preferences all the time and you know go in here, turn it, switch it back and forth. It's kind of just a quick way to switching back to internal. Uh, but that's about it, really. So here, it's synced to MIDI clock, now it's not. So. And uh, I actually don't have any hardware hooked up uh, that generates clock right now, but uh, we, we can do another video on that in the future. Just if you wanna see something like that, just leave a comment below and uh, I'll make it happen. So uh, moving on here, let's see, what else do we got? I think we covered the main GUI, uh, well, the transport. Uh, Element right now doesn't do its own sequencing yet. So the point of the transport here is simply just to send timing information to plugins that do actually sequence. So, you know, arpeggiators and, you know, things like that. For plugins that actually understand timing, that's what that's here for now. But a future version of Element will actually have its own sequencer and, and things like that. And it's it's actually going to be kind of cool. It's, it's going to come in the form of nodes like these. Uh, except, you know, you'll wire them up and yeah, it's, uh, I don't want to spill the beans too much, but it, it's going to be cool. It's going to be real cool. And then these two dots right here, if you can see the, the mouse, it'll blink on MIDI input. And then uh, we need a, we need a MIDI output here. And it'll also blink on MIDI output as well. Uh, so we're generating, we have clock on, so that's why it's staying solid green. But that's what that is. The, the top one is uh, MIDI received. The bottom one is MIDI sent to you MIDI out. We'll move on to the menu now. File menu, it's pretty simple. You know, your standard stuff. Create a new session. Don't save it. You can open a session. 
Yeah, we got a bunch of stuff in there. You can save the session, save session as. Uh, import and export graph is like, uh, you know, say you have this graph and you want to save it to disk and then load it into another session. That's what that's for. Um, edit, you know, it's your, your standard stuff. Create a new graph on the session. Like here it is there, it's that new one. Uh, you can duplicate the current graph, delete the current graph, uh, undo and redo. So I'll just uh, whoop, delete that, undo, you know, it's just standard stuff. The view menu, uh, patch bay, it just shows the patch bay, simple. Graph editor, shows the graph editor. Uh, graph mixer, pops up the mixer or hides the mixer. Channel strip, hides it, show it. You see a pattern here, I'm sure, but we're just going through everything. Virtual keyboard, bring it back. Uh, so that's getting us right into, well, there's actually session properties too, so you can give a specific name to your session. My cool session, and it'll, pop, it'll show up here. If you have a name, it'll show there. Uh, tempo, this directly links to over here, unless you have external on. See, it's not doing anything now, because it would, would be syncing the clock. Uh, you can leave some notes for your session there. That's all straightforward stuff. Graph properties, we already saw that. It's the same thing as toggling here. Uh, what else we got? The plugin manager. So this is where you'll go in and you'll scan for plugins. I'll just scan real quick. Oh, that was actually really quick. Uh, you know, you can you know hot, you can delete plugins from here. It won't delete them from disk, but it'll delete them from you know the uh, the built-in search. Uh, so you can just play around with that. There's a few options. You can change the search pass for VSTs, and you know just get in there, and it, it's not too tough to learn. Uh, key mappings. So we got basically everything can be customized. So we can. Let's see the graph mixer for example if you want to do a specific key command for that you just you know come over hit the plus and that's what I'm gonna say I don't know command R which doesn't make any sense at all but so now we have that and I'm hitting command R and you, you can change everything or you can reset to defaults uh, it's pretty cool it's it's nice you know you can define your own key mappings however you want them to be uh, controllers here is, uh, I'll just create a new one. This is where you do controller, you set up your controller maps. Uh, there's, again, there's another video on this totally where it explains how all of this works. Uh, I recommend uh, if you're wanting to use controller mapping that you watch that video. It's real quick, it's, it just shows how, you know, all the ins and outs of, uh, where mini mapping is now and kind of where we're going in the future. So just keep moving here. Up in the options menu, this is kind of just, uh, it's a condensed version of the preferences. So basically everything that's in the preferences window here, it'll show up in short form in this menu. So that's all there is to it. That's, uh, it's just a convenience. Uh, if you don't want to go into preferences all the time. Close all plugin windows. Actually, let's just bring up a graph real quick. Actually, nothing's on here. We'll go with the trusty RoboVerb. I don't have one plugin window, but close plugin windows, show all plugin windows. Pretty simple. There's key, key commands for that as well. This is a debug window. Uh, you guys won't have that, but I do. <laughs> uh, anyway. And then help, uh, this one, uh, the online documentation, that'll go to the help site. And then submit feedback will go to the kushvi.net website. Um, and there'll be a form there if you want to report a bug or you have an idea for a feature or you know Element doesn't do something that you need it to do. Um, I'm usually pretty receptive to all that stuff. I mean, if anything makes sense, uh, and can be applied, you know, if anybody can use it, it's not just, you know, 
something weird that only applies to you or something like that, um, chances are I'll actually eventually get that feature in. So I definitely encourage anybody to uh, use the feedback form. Tell me what you think about the app. Um, you know, I love working on it. I love hearing feedback. So it's, you know, it's a win-win situation. Um, and that's really, uh, that's about all we have for Element right now. Uh, you know, this thing is still pre 1.0, uh, this current version that you're looking at right here. So, you know, we're working on it every day, adding new things, uh, improving it. Um, yeah, so and that's where we're at. Um, that's, the, that's the overview, the bird's eye view of Element. So uh, thanks, guys, for watching this video. I hope that helps, uh, you know, break down kind of mm, the basics of what Element's supposed to be about. It's, uh, it is a plug-in host, but, you know, there's really some powerful features in here. So I uh, highly recommend checking out the trial version and just getting in there and working with it. Or there's the light version, which is 100% free forever. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's it. Peace out, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. See you.